so welcome back uh, to another uh, we are moving the final uh, session of uh, bioenergy technologies so in this uh, we will discuss mainly the a uh, different uh, possible so we have a number of, of uh, routes available for heat from and biomass. power production so this picture will explain that so we have any s biomass we have this uh, different already we have discussed different routes so either we can go for direct combustion and that combustion uh, heat can be utilized in a heat exchanger which can be further used for power production through proper cycle or we can gasify the biomass and that syngas or producer gas we can use it in a boiler for heat in steam turbine later or we can run this producer gas or syngas in an ic engine that is another option coupled with a generator we will get some electrical uh, output or you can use this producer gas in a fuel cell which will directly convert that into electricity and a combined cycle can be also used similarly pyrolysis also we get uh, carbon residues biochar which can be used as a fuel in boiler or we can use the oil and gas obtained from pyrolysis in these different uh, modes then another option is of course our biological conversion that is by aerobic or anaerobic digestion we will get a biogas and that biogas we can run in an engine uh, by for producing power or it can use in a combined cycle so these are different options available for power production using biomass so either we have to go use an ic engine in a gaseous if you are obtaining a gaseous fuel from biomass through any of the method uh, you can uh, one option is uh, you can use an ic engine or you can use a fuel cell if you want a direct electricity and another option is by combined cycle that is by gas turbine or steam turbine coupled with a gasifier or pyrolysis etc we can obtain power so different options are available depending on the uh, product and the quantity etc we can uh, go for uh, one of the routes now how will be a biomass based steam power plant look like so this is a typical uh, biomass based uh, steam power plant so this is our input biomass first it is combusted in a combustion chamber and that heat is used for generating steam so this is a similar to a boiler where we will be using this heat we will transfer this heat to this uh, boiler for converting water into steam then this portion is uh, similar to the normal Rankine cycle we will have a turbine steam turbine it's a steam is expanded high pressure steam is expanded and power is produced here this generator then that uh, expanded steam is passed through a condenser with the help of a cooling water that is condensed and that cooling water before circulating to the boiler again uh, we can preheat that with the help of here you can see with the help of another heat exchanger here and here we can preheat that with the help of flue gas so this red line denotes the flue gas going out after combustion in this combustion chamber so its temperature can be utilized for preheating this water and also the air for combustion we require air this yellow line represents air supply this is the air ambient air supply to the combustion chamber so that air also can be preheated with the help of another heat exchanger so this is an another heat exchanger used for preheating this uh, air before supplying to the combustion chamber so the flue gas this f denotes the flue gas flue gas must pass through this this is our main objective the flue gas is used for heating the steam or generating steam in the steam generator which is also passed through these two heat exchangers one is for uh, heating the air another one is for preheating the feed water 
and here you can see the steam is bleed at this point this this bleeding steam is uh, mixed with the feed water coming for obtaining better efficiency so this is a typical uh, example of biomass based steam power plant so the plant consists of the following already we have discussed here a combustion chamber which is uh, separated from the st steam generator so steam generator is a separate part and combustion chamber is separate part and steam generator is a is typically a boiler of vertical natural circulation of water with super heater and economizer and all other boiler accessories and mountings then the steam turbine can be consist of number of stages so normally the steam turbine expansion will takes place more than one stage for obtaining better performance and here we can see a steam is bleed between the fifth and sixth stage or in between the middle so if you have 10 stages normally the fifth and sixth stage in between the steam is a portion of steam is bleed from the turbine and mixed with the feed water and we have a condenser for rejection of heat then flue gas cleaning system so here we are cleaning our flue gas before uh, supplying to the atmosphere with the help of cyclone separator and bag filter etc for reducing the emission to the atmosphere so that is a flue gas cleaning system then already we have discussed the flue gas uh, before passing after passing the steam generator is passed through the heat exchangers for preheating water and air for combustion so these are some of the components used in this biomass based steam power plant now we have a similarly we can use a gas turbine combined cycle power plant for biomass and that will be with the help of gasifier so first we have to use appropriate gasifier whether it is downdraft updraft or whatever it is and we will convert the biomass into producer gas or syngas which is fed to the gas turbine cycle so this is and we already know why we require a gasifier coupled with gas turbine is the gas turbine we cannot be fired directly with biomass because one thing is the gas turbine will not work with solid fuels and another one is we have to clean the producer gas or syn gas before giving it to the combustion chamber of gas turbines because and the combustion products will uh, damage the turbine blades if you are directly using this producer without cleaning the contaminants turbine blades are made of uh, delicate materials so that can be damaged so this in this cycle first we are gasifying the biomass then cleaning the gas produced before combustion and which will be supplied to the gas turbine as a fuel so this is a widely applied technology in industrial range also because already we have a technology for integrated gasification combined cycle IGCC power plants which runs on coal so already these uh, power plants are available but only difference is uh, there we will be using coal as the fuel and the coal is gasified first through proper uh, gasification technology then that is supplied as a fuel to the gas turbine system so already these systems are available S now we have to switch to biomass instead of coal that is the only uh, difference and in this the purification of producer gas or syngas is very very important and this is a typical block diagram of this uh, biomass coupled gas turbine system so here you can see the first biomass is supplied to a dryer after uh, removing moisture then it is supplied to a gasifier and after that it has to undergo cooling and cleaning that is an important step the producer gas or the syngas is to be cooled and cleaning also takes place in different steps and that is supplied to the combustor of the gas turbine system so this is a Brayton cycle where compressor 
combustor and gas turbine is used and the here you can see the air before supplying to the gasifier is compressed with the help of a booster compressor for matching the pressure supplied to the fuel here so normally the air will be compressed with the help of this main compressor this pressure will be high so our fuel gas supplying through this line should also match with that pressure so for that we are using a booster compressor here by supplying high pressure air in gasification instead of using atmospheric air so that these two pressures will be almost matched and the after power production this flue gas we can uh, we even with the help of a heat exchanger we can use that flue gas if you want for other purpose so in this here we can use another steam power plant cycle also if you require that is a possibility if the flue gas temperature leaving the gas turbine is high uh, you can use another some combined cycle also and this the main problem in this is we have to remove the contaminants from producer gas that will be mainly uh, following components will be there particles solid particles so mainly solid particles will be char particles ash and other bed materials if you are using fluidized bed gas fair uh, sand as bed material will also will be there so this will be present in this syn gas and this will cause erosion of turbine blades combustor booster combustor etc their failure ultimately that will lead to the mechanical failure of these components so we have to remove all these particles then similarly the ash of uh, this biomass will contain alkali materials you already know ash is uh, oxides of sodium potassium etc so then that will be present and that will also cause corrosion of mechanical parts of the prime mover then another possibility is we are using if you are using air for gasification large number of nitrogen will be available and that nitrogen will react with hydrogen etc to form ammonia hydrogen hcn etc and nox emissions will also be there at high temperature so we have to eliminate this also and another important contaminant is tar so what is tar tar is a mixture of Uh, organic complex higher order organic compounds they are mainly aromatic not straight chain hydrocarbons they will be aromatic in nature of and they will be of large molecular weight and when our gas is cooled in between 350 to 400 degree they will start to condense so this tar will be start to condense in liquid form and they will be very difficult to separate also so comparing to all other impurities this tar removal is a very difficult process and they can cause uh, severe problems to the this booster compressor uh, turbine blades etc so that these are the commonly uh, available impurities and we will also have some sulfur compounds like hydrogen sulfide hcl chlorine compounds etc which will cause acidic corrosion so this will form acids and this acid will finally help in corrosion of this mechanical parts so all these impurities should be removed so for the removal we will have the following steps first this has to be cooled so already we have seen before cleaning this producer gas or syn gas we have to cool this to at exit temperature to a, around 400 to 450 degree and normally the particles the solid particles char ash dust etc can be removed with the help of cyclone separator so we will be use a number of cyclone separators and the filters fabric filters etc then other organic impurities like tar can be removed through different technology so one technology is uh, it cools this syn gas in with just above the water dew point and we can remove this tar and we can obtain separation of tar and water 
so that is one technology several technologies are available for removal of tar and normally for water removal uh, we have to condense the moisture trap is used for removing the water and all other inorganic impurities like carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfate ammonia etc all these are inorganic impurities they can removed by our scrubber technology which works on water absorption so different technologies are available so we have to use all these one by one for removing the impurities so mainly we will be using cyclone separator a filter then different types of scrubbers are used then moisture traps and tar removal so tar removal is the most difficult part and it's a costly one also now we will come to the ic engine applications this uh, syn gas produced from gas fire we can use it in ic engine also and already this technology was there because in world war 2 after world in that world war 2 era there was a shortage of fossil fuels uh, petrol and diesel so most of the military systems work by a gasifier based ic engines where they will use some uh, gas to run on that ic engines slightly modified ic engines so that was there very years before and it's also very uh, promising technology and cost is very less so syn gas if you are using syn gas in gas turbine or fuel cell etc it's a costly uh, application but comparing to ic engine so already we are ic engines are there which run on combust natural gas run on cng so if you slightly modify this ic engine we can use it as running on gas producer gas or syn gas and another advantage is they are more tolerant towards contaminants so already we have discussed what are the possible contaminants and their removal etc but if you are using it in ic engine it's more tolerant towards this contaminants compared to uh, gas turbines and fuel cell etc and we can research in this area is mainly split into two category one is uh, we can use this syn gas in uh, sa engine modified sa engine that is spark ignition engine uh, whether it is carburetor engine or a port injection type and another one is we can use it in diesel engine also so these two are entirely different application one is for petrol engine another one is for diesel engine so their modification is also different and already we know the carbureted uh, and port injection type uh, sa engine mix the fuel and air prior to the combustion chamber but the only problem is uh, so we in this we are using producer gas as a fuel so its volume will be high so the this due to this high volume of syn gas this volumetric efficiency will be less so the main problem of us uh, using our syn gas in sa engine is is uh, volumetric efficiency will be less compared to cng or other uh, petrol engine etc and consequently the power output uh, will be less compared to the petrol or cng engine then in diesel engines is another alternative because in diesel engine if you are using the syn gas it will considerably reduce the emissions when diesel while using diesel we are obtaining a number of emissions like nox emission uh, particulate emission carbon monoxide etc so that we can reduce if you are using a syn gas as a fuel but only problem is the self in diesel engine we know that diesel engine work by auto ignition is uh, ignite by high pressure without supplying any spark plug etc but the syn gas ignition self ignition temperature is typically above 500 degree it will be higher so we cannot ignite this uh, syn gas alone by this uh, combustion ratio of diesel so the solution is uh, in diesel engine the possible way is we can use a dual fuel diesel engine which where diesel is injected as a pilot fuel 
for combustion to initiate the ignition and by syn gas we can inject to the uh, suction or induction system so that is the way how we have to modify this uh, diesel engine for running on syn gas so we have to inject a small quantity of diesel here also for initiating this uh, in ignition as a pilot fuel and the syn gas can be injected in the uh, induction system that is during suction itself so that is one way of converting our diesel engine to a syn gas based engine the problem with syn gas is uh, its composition will be highly varying so if you are changing the biomass or changing this oxidizing agent etc the gasifying agent if it is changed or its flow rate is changed etc will composition of this syn gas will be entirely different so that is the problem with this type of applications so the biomass lacks consistency in the percentage of composition of this gas and another problem is the syn gas calorific value is low compared to cng and is, but its energy density is comparable so that is another good point and another thing is the stoichiometric air fuel ratio is less so if you if you know the petrol engine the stoichiometric air fuel ratio is around 15 is to 1 and diesel also it's around that uh, 18 is to 1 etc but comparing to this and comparing to cng and hydrogen etc the syn gas stoichiometric air fuel ratio is very less so this will result in high uh, b specific fuel consumption that is another limitation of this syn gas as in ic engines so one is its calorific value is less then another one is this stoichiometric air fuel ratio is less which will result in uh, low, uh, high specific fuel consumption and this is a typical comparison of all the properties of uh, in particular this journal in the review so here they are we taken three cases of syn gas from different biomass and their composition is given here carbon nitrogen nitrogen etc and that is compared with two a standard fuel one is compressed natural gas cng we are already using cng based engines and another one is hydrogen so here you can see this mainly the heating value the lower calorific value in this megajoule per kilogram you can see it is around uh, 17 and between 20 etc this syn gas but here it is very high 47 hydrogen it is very very high so that is another problem and we can compare almost all other properties here and it's you can see here the auto ignition temperature auto ignition temperature in kelvin so in degree celsius also it is higher than this cng cng around 60 degree or 50 degree higher so that is another problem and you can see here also uh, the stoichiometric air fuel ratio on mass basis is very less it's around four around 5 7 etc but cng it is 17 hydrogen it is 34 so that is another problem so this is the overall comparison of all the properties of syn gas three cases of syn gas with cng and hydrogen so the fun final conclusion is the direct injection technology and high conversion ratio of a latest spark ignition engines an advancement in cleaning process of gasification are some motivate factors in this so we are many progress is there for cleaning this syn gas as well as in engine part also we have different types of modified engines are available with high we are getting high conversion ratio petrol engine also so these are uh, promising factors in this area and another way is stratified engine we can use stratified engines for syn gas running the syn gas so that we can eliminate this problem associated with small stoichiometric air fuel ratio and the problem the main problem the associated with this fuel consumption high specific fuel consumption that is to be addressed and that is mainly in the design of storage so the high specific fuel consumption means the storage of such system is to be very large 
so that is to be addressed for syngas based IC engines now we are going to the final application of bioenergy that is using a fuel cell and typically this will be a solid oxide fuel cell so solid oxide fuel cell is a conversion device which directly convert this uh, a gaseous fuel or liquid fuel into electricity the main advantage is its high efficiency and emissions comparatively less emissions and its flexibility etc so this figure uh, denotes a typical comparison of this efficiency and power of different uh, power producing equipment so you can see this electrical efficiency in y axis and power in x axis so if you compare this you can see the fuel cell is having a very high efficiency around 60 percentage or uh, in that range our solid oxide fuel cell also have around 50 percentage efficiency but its power range is less so you can see this you can use for only small power applications or otherwise you have to use a large number of cells stacked together and if you, you can see the conventional uh, IC engines here conventional uh, engines conventional uh, gas turbines are here so that is suitable for high power production and sufficiency is around 30-40 uh, percent and we have this steam turbine also which is used for very high power production with a slightly higher efficiency but you can see here if you are combining this fuel cell with a gas turbine system hybrid system combined cycle with fuel cell and gas turbine we are obtaining very high power as well as very high efficiency so that is the conclusion from this figure so if you are combining a fuel cell and a gas turbine or steam turbine etc we will get obtain high power as well as high efficiency and this uh, soil seed can be worked with producer gas generated by a gasifier which will be mainly already we know what is a combustion of producer gas will have carbon monoxide uh, methane will be there etc so that is why solid oxide fuel cells number of fuel cells are available for example you have proton exchange mem membrane PEM fuel cell but the problem with PEM fuel cell is it works only with hydrogen it's pure hydrogen is required for running the PEM fuel cells but this SOFC you can see SOFC is worked by syngas or producer gas etc that is the advantage of SOFC and it's a high temperature fuel cell also compared to other fuel cells the operating temperature is around as uh, 60 to 1000 degrees celsius so that is another difference it's a high temperature fuel cell and it's very much that is why it is very much suitable for power production uh, power combined power plants because this high temperature we can use this high grade heat this high grade energy for process heating also so in that is the advantage of using SOFC we are also obtaining electrical power and in addition to that uh, we will have a high a large height this high temperature can be utilized for heating application also so that is why we are going for SOFC in power production from uh, this bioenergy applications and typically we will have we will be supplying it will have an SOFC we have three parts one cathode anode and electrolyte arranged like this and we will have an interconnector through which uh, we our electron is passed and current is produced which can be used for different applications and our air will be supplying to the cathode and our fuel so in this case our fuel is our producer gas coming from a gas pair that can be supplied to the uh, this uh, anode So the already we know the fuel cell have four five major components anode, cathode, electrolyte and in addition to that we have an interconnector that connects between this cathode and anode and a sealant is also used. 
for a close contact between these three layers we will be using some sealant so normally the electrolyte is made all these are mostly made of composite material electrolyte is made of yttrium stabilized zirconia and some high temperature low intermediate temperature application will be also using gadolinium doped with ceria and cerium gadolinium oxide also we can use all these are composite materials and for cathode we will be using strontium doped with lanthanum magnate also known as lsm or lanthanum strontium cobalt oxide so these are the material used for cathode and anode we will be using nickel and yttrium stabilized zirconia mostly and some application we use copper yttrium stabilized zirconia or copper cerium oxide etc and as an interconnector we will be using metals normally metals and ceramics are used as an interconnector so co uh, normally from 800 degree to 1000 degree celsius uh, we will be using strontium calcium etc are most commonly used and as a sealant we can use two types of sealant compressive sealant and rigid sealant so compressive sealant are metal gaskets like gold silver etc can be used as a sealant and mica based material also used whereas rigid sealants are glass and ceramics so as a sealant in between these layers we can use either silver gold etc or we can use glass ceramics etc so typical reactions that will happen in this salt oxide fuel cell will be this that is in the cathode side we are supplying air so in that air nitrogen will be inert and that oxygen oxygen will uh, receive electron coming from this interconnector and go to this oxygen ion oxygen negative ion and will move through this electrolyte so that is the reaction happening in the cathode side so cathode side oxygen will receive electron coming through this uh, interconnector and it will uh, convert into oxygen ion negative ion and that will move through this electrolyte and in the anode side we are supplying this fuel in this case we have producer gas mainly carbon monoxide hydrogen and methane so carbon dioxide is uh, not convertible so mainly we have three reactions hydrogen carbon monoxide and methane will react with the upcoming oxygen ion and will be converted to water and the carbon dioxide and the electron that will be uh, liberated here and that will again go through this interconnector so we will get a continuous supply of electron through this line which can be taken for other power applications so that is the basis of this uh, salt oxide fuel cell so in the cathode the oxygen from air is uh, converted to oxygen ion by absorbing this electron and will move through this electrolyte and in the anode we are supplying this uh, fuel producer gas so and all these components hydrogen carbon monoxide and methane will react with this oxygen ion and will be converted to water steam or carbon dioxide that is going out through this here and the electron is liberated here so this will the important reactions taking place and the main factors that will affect the power and uh, electrical efficiency are one is the gas composition so if carbon dioxide percentage is high the power production will be less so like that it will depend on gas composition and contaminants also the contaminants will affect the performance of salt dioxide fuel cell because for example if you have a number of carbon deposit it will be deposited in this material and power production will be reduced another one is the temperature we know as service is high temperature fuel cell so the temperature is to be maintained in that range and recirculation the exhaust gas recirculation also depends on performance and mainly the performance is evaluated based on one is the power output how much power you are getting then one is the electrical efficiency and one is the carbon deposition amount so these are some performance factors 
we are using in this type of applications so it is a promising uh, area the combination of producer gas combined with the SOFC is a hot topic in research and mainly the materials what is uh, the material wise we have development is occurring as in the material to be used in this fuel cell so that it can uh, support more uh, fuel with more contaminants so development is occurring but the scope of commercial is, is not uh, that much high because of due to durability of this technology is commercial so all these are in some ex research level or lab scale technology so its scope is in the commercial area is yet to be uh, unclear so that is a problem with this type of technology so with this we are stopping this session thank you